number two for me, uh, the evolution of alternatives to animal protein. So this was coming on hard and fast at the beginning of the pandemic, and consumers were looking for uh, products that would help boost their immune system. And there's continuing to be a, a growing number of consumers that are looking for the better for me, better for the planet options. That's one of the key takeaways from all of the alt meat and alt dairy uh, work that's been done or is being done, all the product development that's being done. There is real interest in better for me, better for the planet. And so all of us need to internalize that and begin to appreciate what can we do to produce products that are perceived to be better for me and better for the planet. And not just perceived that way, but actually are better for me, better for the planet. Because the initial sampling, the initial trial of this, whether it's the Impossible Burger, Beyond Meat, whatever it happened to be, was through the roof. And then consumers stopped buying it because the product didn't compete on taste and price. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about that and, and what happens in the next iteration because the market for this aren't true believers. The market for these products aren't vegetarians or vegans. There aren't enough to justify the capital. I was talking to a friend in the venture capital community a, a couple of weeks ago, and he said there are 80 products currently competing for a shrinking shelf space in the alt meat category. About maybe 10, maybe 20% of them will survive, but the capital that has been poured into those is a reflection of the desire to support better for me, better for the planet products. It's also to support a new category at retail. Rarely is there a new category that's actually introduced into the supermarket. So the opportunity to become dominant in a new category uh, generated a lot of interest from investors as well. So the demand for better for me, better for the planet is real and it's growing. And we need to internalize that. I think there are some in ag agriculture who have looked at kind of the, the downfall of the current alt meat category and said, well, we told you so. This was just a fad, it's not going to survive. Maybe but we'll talk about where it's going to evolve from here from my perspective. But the lessons that we can take away from this, one of them is that the interest in Better For Me, Better For The Planet products is real and growing. Um, as I said before, the current uh, alternatives, the current iterations do not compete on taste or price. And at the end of the day, if you can't compete specifically on taste, you can't compete uh, because there's only a certain number of consumers that are going to be true believers that are going to buy a product uh, if it doesn't meet the taste profile or the, the, the price point that they're accustomed to or that they're willing to pay. So you've seen a lot of activity in this space commercially, but the only place where you're beginning to see it really have an impact is in the dairy case. So what's different about the dairy case? It could be that close enough is good enough in some areas, right? So the dairy alternatives are white, they're emulsified, they're sold in the dairy case, they're sold in similar packaging, and if I'm using it on cereal or to flavor my coffee or for some other purpose, and I'm not drinking it as a glass of milk, or perhaps even if I am, it's close enough. And so we've seen greater penetration in fluid dairy alternatives than we have in any other sector, which is really interesting. And that sector has exploded as well. Virtually every nut or grain on the planet has been converted to some kind of dairy alternative. You can buy spelt milk on Amazon if you're interested. Honest to God, you can go online and buy spelt milk if you'd like to buy some. So it's really interesting that you can look at this and say, okay, where are we going? The target market for all of these are flexitarians, people who really want to do something that's better for them and better for the planet, but the products today simply don't meet that, that demand, particularly when you get to price and taste. So where do we go from here? Because the competition is far from over. This competition is a long way from being done. So the opportunity, as I see it, is to really lean into that desire for better for me, better for the planet alternatives and talk about how you are making progress on that. So for example, if you are a meat, dairy, or beef, or chicken producer, poultry producer, Generally, the products you sell have a single ingredient, which is attractive to many. You've got micronutrients and macronutrients that oftentimes can't be found in other products. You continue to work on improving your environmental footprint, which is gonna become a requirement as we continue to go forward. So lean into this and talk about what you're doing to meet that desire for better for me, better for the planet products as to simply resisting them. The other thing is to really understand and appreciate that the current consolidation and uh, integration that we're seeing or, or, or rationalization that we're seeing in this market 
will mean that the survivors will be stronger and they will be significantly better. So in five years from now, the 10% that survive will be able to compete on price and taste. And at that point, it's an entirely new game. So don't assume that this competition is over, it's not. Um, you know, I kind of look at this in, in, in a similar way to the dot-com bubble that happened back in 2005. There was all of the irrational exuberance, and if you had a website, you could attract capital and people would invest in you, and boom, it burst. We're seeing the same thing happen now with meat alternatives. So that capital is likely to be washed out. The survivors will retrench. They will improve their formulations. They will, they will amalgamate science and technology from others. And in the next five to seven years, versions two, three, four, and five will be markedly better than what's in the market today. And it will be much more competitive. And once it reaches parity on price and taste, then it's game on because that's what it has to achieve in order to be competitive long-term. 